The movie begins when a kaleidoscope flickers from blue to red and back, casting a spellbinding glow over a jazz-filled club where young men breathe life into their music. The scene fades to a show of beautiful women in a black, wired mask and clothes that hug her body, standing in a classic building as spotlight flashes across her face. The setting is ethereal. In the next scene we are transitioned to the hustling and bustling New York airport. A schedule is displayed on a huge screen at the lobby. A woman's voice can be heard through a microphone, enriched by the music playing in the background. As she announces the departure for Istanbul, people of all shades and ethnicities file towards one direction. They all hold different stories in their hearts, and it's peculiarly endearing to watch them all gathered in one place, with different destinations in mind. A child holds onto her mother as an excited grin lights up her face. A young blogger holds up his camera to capture this moment. Amidst the throng, solitary figures linger on the periphery, each a poignant testament to the tapestry of human experience. Amidst the whirlwind of travelers, a yellow bag can be seen in the luggage area, moving towards its owner on the conveyor belt. A young man, Mamet, strolls over to the luggage area to retrieve his bag, when his eyes catch on a petite brunette, and he seems to be instantly smitten by her. Enraptured by her presence, Mamet finds himself spellbound, stealing furtive glances, failing to be subtle about it. The narrator narrates that this was the moment that Mamet knew she was the one he was looking for. She reciprocates the action, smiles in understanding and he blushes. But this interaction ends, when Mamet's bag arrives and he leaves. Yet destiny weaves its intricate web, intertwining their fates once more. Turns out that the brunette, named Saren, is the owner of the yellow bag. And upon checking the contents of the bag, she learns that the suitcase she picked up is not hers. Distressed, she alerts the nearby worker and the commotion catches Mamet's eyes. The worker informs her that all the luggage is out of the plane, and they cannot do anything about it. At this moment, Mamet walks over to her, saying that he saw someone take a similar case. As Saren curses in Turkish, Mamet watches her stunned, since he is also Turkish. A meet cute and Seuss. Saren is visibly upset, because all her money, even her phone was in that suitcase. Her frustration is palpable. Mamet tries to calm her down, promising to help. They then try to contact the case's owner and learn that he's from Chinatown. Turns out, that's where Mamet is headed and he convinces her to let him give her a ride. Her internal monologue hints that the choice she made in that moment was a huge turning point in her life, and what would have happened if she would have chosen to go her separate way. On their way to Chinatown, Mamet and Saren seem enthralled by the majesty of the city, as their taxi snakes through the labyrinthine roads of the city. Skyscrapers kiss the sky and a modern, exuberant environment greets them. Conversing joyfully, they reach the market, Saren commenting that it feels like she has been here hundreds of times. Upon reaching the location, they find the man's wife, who informs them that her husband is in a hotel, with Saren's luggage. Before heading to the hotel, they decide to get some food. While having hot dogs together, she playfully comments that she came to New York to con strangers and make them chase after her luggage, turns out she is actually here for a job interview. A playful banter turns into flirting and they reveal that they're both married and would never consider doing something as aghast as adultery. Upon Upon reaching the Marshall City Hotel, their paths intersect with Rose, an old cheerful lady, who envelops them in a comforting embrace. Saren is forced to stay the night there as Mr. Chang, the man who has Saren's suitcase, promises to deliver the case the next day. She and Mamet exchange pleasantries in a futile attempt to part ways. But before leaving, he turns around, worried, that what would happen if she doesn't get her suitcase the other day. In a second, he makes up his mind that he would be staying the night at the hotel as well, setting the stage for a tantalizing dance of temptation and restraint. Saren consistently tries to resist Mamet's efforts to spend time together. Their marriages shackle them apart but their undeniable attraction draws them together. Sparks fly, accentuated by their restlessness. As they both decide to go to their room, Mamet offers her to later get drinks at the rooftop. But she declines it, calling it a bad idea. In the confinement of their rooms, they unwind, relax and shower. Later, Mamet can be seen sitting at the rooftop bar, enjoying his glass of water, when he spots Saren, all glammed up. Mamet looks at her with a raw longing. Her silver dress clings close to her lithe body. They share drinks and talk about their lives and careers. Turns out that she is an accessory designer for brides, and he on the other hand performs with a band. While sharing their drinks, they strike a deal to stay together until Saren finds her luggage and to never again be in contact. Meanwhile, Mamet receives a text from a girl named Etta, to which he replies that he's busy, looking partially annoyed. As soulful music plays in the background, they indulge in more deep conversation. In a moment of vulnerability, Mamet bears his soul, confessing his deepest desires and fears. Saren, too, reveals the complexities of her heart, torn between duty and desire. She informs her that she has been with her husband for 10 years now. At this he replies that his wife is his college sweetheart. During the conversation, he admits that he wants to become a father and start a family. Saren says that she does not relate to it, as she would rather focus on her career first. 
She is not ready to become a mother yet. They discuss their respective marriages. It seems that they both struggle with their respective spouses. When questions arise amidst a relationship, it ceases to be authentic. Love is supposed to be effortless, and they both yearn for it. They were both looking for an escape, and it was a perfect coincidence that they found each other. Saren tempts Mehmet to see the positive in being unfaithful, but he refuses to even consider cheating on his wife, whom he has been with since college. His love and devotion for his partner is evident in the way he speaks of her. Love, if authentic, can transcend any obstacle and temptation. According to him, a person who is truly enamored would never consider doing something as dreadful as what Saren suggested. At his response, she says that no one gets married to cheat, but just like doing the same job, staying in the same place and doing the same things can wear people down, so can faithfulness. Mehmet stares at her, the depths of his eyes narrating an inner battle. As she gets up, he follows her further onto the roof, in an isolated area, and finds her smoking a cigarette. A heartfelt moment unfolds as they share their childhood dreams and sing a beautiful melody together. Mehmet compliments her voice and suggests she should perform with their band. She laughs it off, calling it his thing. She then comments that she always dreamed of living in New York, but he on the other hand, finds Istanbul better. In a wild turn of events, Saren, an ardent admirer of New York's allure, practically drags Mehmet to go and tour Manhattan with her. It marks the onset of a joyful night to come. Failing to catch a taxi, they decide to hop onto a bus, their minds thrumming with exhilarating possibilities. On the bus, a young man hands them a cute drawing of them talking, mistaking them for a couple. They thank him and smile at the kind gesture. However, their journey takes an unforeseen turn, when at the time for them to get off, they get separated, as Mamet fails to get off on the first stop. He asks the driver to stop the bus, but he refuses, stating that now he would have to wait till the next stop. On the other hand, Saren founds herself alone, in a shady part of the city. A few prostitutes try to rob the lone woman and she retaliates. Their pimp intervenes and threatens Saren with a knife, her bravery is tested as she stands her ground against assailant. But before anything could go wrong, Mehmet finds her and tries to negotiate with the pimp. In an attempt to save her, he hands over his wallet and bluffs that he is Saren's husband. As they are leaving, the bald pimp spews some nonsense about them. No longer worried for Saren's safety, Mehmet lets his anger lead his body and turns back to face the disgusting man. In a display of blatant chivalry, he beats him up and warns him not to hurt any woman again. Saren, albeit afraid, seems impressed by him. United once more, their bond deepens as they vow never to let go of each other's hand again. In the next scene, the city lights reflect off the lake's surface. Manhattan is awake deep into the night. Despite the chaotic lifestyle of its inhabitants, it's serenely quiet. Sitting on the banks, Saren and Mamet share a cigar. They blow off some steam and laugh hysterically at the night's previous events. Against the backdrop of Manhattan's shimmering lights, they find solace in each other's company, sharing laughter and cigars amidst the tranquility of the night. Fueled by the adrenaline, Mamet comments that the prostitutes must have felt threatened by her beauty and calls her gorgeous. She laughs at his compliment, but when he recommends that they should call it a night, Saren says she wants to remember this night and do something she wouldn't in Istanbul. Tentatively, he agrees. Beneath the huge billboards New York is famous for, they walk the streets, slowly easing up with each other. They try a few moves with the dancers practicing in the middle of the square, giggling, stealing touches and glances, and amidst all this, exchanging parts of their soul. Walking, they bump into a woman handing out pamphlets, who invites them to an orgasm contest. Deciding to make the most out of this night, they decide to take a go and enter a dimly lit club with an erotic exhibition of human emotions. They see a woman sitting on a sofa chair, having the time of her life, acting to have an orgasm. Unbeknownst to Mamet, Saren signs herself up in it on the pretext of going to the bathroom. He is surprised and amused by her boldness. People collectively hold their breaths at her show and Mamet feels something stir inside him. His desire for her is etched in every line of his face. The audience cheers as Saren ends her provoking exhibition. She seems unfazed by her actions, the perfect epitome of debauchery and carefreeness. Mamet, on the other hand, stands stiff, his every muscle coiled to battle with his heart. They spill out onto a street, staggering and laughing. Saren is adorned with a crown and a sash, courtesy of her winning the competition. Mamet comments that he didn't expect such boldness from her. She laughs and that is when a group of people making videos catches her eyes. In their rawest carefree nature, they join them and make videos, live for the world to see. Drunk, they lost themselves in the rhythm of life. Later, they end up in a club, downing glass after glass of wine. The bliss and ignorance of the youth guides their hands, their behavior. Slowly, they give up the resistance to the attraction. They dance, an electrifying energy crackling between them. Each move brings them closer than before. Back in the hotel, confined in an elevator, Mamet's resolve crumbles, and he surrenders to the magnetic pull between them. The fine thread holding him to sanity snaps, and he kisses Saren. She doesn't resist him. The elevator closes, with them, kissing each other with uncontrolled passion, their hands on each other's body. Passion and lust ignite, and they share an intimate moment. It is obvious that they have invincible chemistry and they complement each other perfectly. Guided by the desire, he takes her back to his room. 
and they get lost into each other. In the morning, Saren wakes up in Mamet's arms, the weight of her actions, haunting her. Her heart is heavy with remorse for being swept up in a whirlwind of a night in New York and betraying her marital vows. She quickly wears Mamet's shirt, grabs her clothes, dashes out of his room and back into hers. He tries to follow her, but then changes his mind upon knowing that her yellow suitcase has been returned to her, and as per the deal, their journey has ended. Back in her room, she plops down on a chair with a deep sigh and turns on her phone, which is flooded with notifications. The wallpaper shows her and Mamet smiling up at the camera. It is revealed that the two of them are married to each other and all this time, they were trying to rekindle their relationship by pretending to not know each other. Sighing, she calls a woman named Etta, but finds her busy on another call. On the other hand, Etta is on a call with Mamet, informing him of the hearing date, which will be on the 20th of next month. The date is set, a stark reminder of the impending dissolution of their union. Later, Saren receives the same information, confirming their mutual decision to part ways without the need for witnesses. The pieces of the previous night start falling into place. Mamet's love for his wife and his refusal to cheat on her. Saren's words, telling him that staying with one person forever is a tiring feat. Their love was going through a rocky phase and they came to America to patch up. Now they do not want to separate but the hearing date has been fixed, they are no longer sure about what they want. Dread clouds them. It seems as if both of them do not want to go through with this hearing, but they are hesitant to reverse their decision. Saren buries her face in Mamet's shirt and stares off into the distance, lost in her thoughts. Their selfie glows on her phone screen. We are then given a glimpse into their memories. Waves crash across the rocks as they both lie on the beach, gently caressing each other. Turns out that they first saw each other at a swimming pool. Their instant attraction sealed their future together. Mamet was instantly drawn to her in inexplicable ways and she knew she was meant to be with him. At the time they first met, Saren had a boyfriend. She broke up with him when Mamet asked her out and turned the course of her life around. Listening to her heart led her to the love of her life. In fact, it was not the airport where their love life began, but long ago, in Turkey. They both wonder if things would have been different if they had never met who they would be, where they would be. At that time, they were head over heels. After three years of being together, Saren got an admission in a college in New York in fashion design. But she turned it down for him, unable to bear the thought of being apart, because they were deeply in love. One day, when they were at the beach, she told him that her father wants to meet him. Problems arose when her wealthy father insulted Mamet for being the reason. She left a secure future and stayed behind. He called him a loser for being in a band and told him to get a real job, to become worthy of Saren. Despite of the oppositions, they eloped. Only a few people were invited and her parents were ignorant of the nuptials. Despite the unhealthy start to their official union, they made it work. Mamet got employed and gave up his music career, giving up his one love for another. On the other hand, Saren landed a designing job for a well-known company. Ecstatic and happy, they began a new life with each other, centered around love. They became each other's greatest support, confidante and friend. They thought they could get through anything, side by side. Marriage did not hinder their attraction, but only intensified it. Juggling career with a relationship seemed easy at first. Saren worked diligently designing for the company. No one was allowed to interrupt her or hell broke loose. The pressure of her job made her jittery and ready to snap any moment. A small part of her world shattered when she found out that the company had stolen her designs and given her no credit for it. Upon confrontation, they fired her. She raged and screamed in frustration, stressed beyond measure. The first seeds of regret were sown in her heart. She doubted whether she had made the right decision by not going to America and choosing to stay with Mamet, and started smoking. To make amends, she sent her work to New York without telling her husband anything about it. He found out anyways but did not address the issue. Tension arose due to the lack of communication. Doubt and regret fueled the distance growing rapidly between them. He kept waiting for her to tell him, and she continued not to because she feared he would say no. These negative feelings turned into bickering and arguments. A chasm developed, suffocating their once mighty love. Misunderstandings turned unbearable. They were no longer the perfect couple, madly in love but just two people who couldn't stand the other's presence. Saren went to a photo shoot often to mingle with her associates and friends. Their precarious status turned even more threatened when Mamet grew jealous of her ventures. Arguments morphed into fighting and yelling. Tiny things escalated into fiery words faster than wildfire, a contrasting image to what they had once been. He once asked her why she took so long at these sessions. He then got annoyed over the fact that she had placed something on his music instruments. She got irritated over his constant mistrust. They ended the call, both annoyed and angry at the other. Later, when she got back home, Mamet accused her of being with her co-worker. Drunk, he fired hurtful statements over her absence. His dejected wife tried to explain the reality to him but his lack of faith in her clouded his judgment. Fast forward to another morning, Saren woke up to the ringing of his phone. Texts from an unknown woman piqued her interest. 
Mehmet had been cheating on her. When she asked him about it, he said that he met that girl at a concert they both went to. He brushed it off as nothing special and said that if he had anything to hide, he would put a password on his mobile phone. Unconvinced, she said that he was making excuses. Saren demanded to know what happened after the concert for her to send such intimate photos, and Mehmet swore that it wasn't what she thought it was. He dropped the woman off at her home and that was all. Saren tossed her wedding ring to him, screaming that it was over. He continued to explain himself as she stormed off. The first large crack in their relationship had appeared. Despair and hurt scarred them. The next morning, Mehmet found a letter on his desk. It was from his wife. After acknowledging all the unhealthy pathways, they had traversed, she had written, that their love had been extinguished. Messaging another woman was the last straw. It was time for them to part ways. They could no longer go on, and she was sorry, because she knows that if they were to stay together, they will always end up fighting. She did not have the energy for it anymore. She wanted a divorce. A torrent of emotions cascade over his face. Regret, pain, anger, sadness and remnants of his love for Saren fought for dominance over his features. The next thing he knew, they were at the therapist's, narrating their story to the marriage counselor. She tried to make them see the other's point of view. She asked them what would they do if they were in their partner's shoes, but fueled by anger, they were unable to answer her questions. Resigned, she advised them to think carefully before making their decision. All this love could not be thrown away just like that. They had been together for 10 years and it had meaning. When asked if given the chance to meet all over again, whether they would be able to fall in love once more, Saren replied immediately that they were utterly different now, their personalities greatly altered, and they would barely like each other. Regardless of getting another chance, it did not matter. They were heading towards an inevitable divorce, and nothing could change that. Since it was their last session with the counselor, she suggested them to take a trip somewhere, pretending not to know one another, pretending to meet for the first time, and that was how their fateful trip to New York was planned. It was meant to be a fresh start, a chance to reignite the spark that had once ignited their love. The smirks, the hints at the start of the movie, all made a lot more sense now. The constant resistance, the undeniable pull, and the desire to be together, to fit into the jigsaw puzzle of their story. The initial story flows by. Them exploring the city together, Rose looking suspiciously at both of them when they asked for different rooms despite being a couple. Mehmet saving Saren from the pimp, and saying that he is her husband. Dancing on the sidewalks beneath giant billboards in Times Square. At the club, when they couldn't keep their hands off each other and admitted they still had feelings. This trip revealed that their love had never died, it had just been buried beneath a tumult of doubt and mistrust. It had been clouded by their irritation and lack of efforts. All it needed was a little understanding on both parts to reignite. The trip had worked. Confusion waned them, and now they were not sure if they wanted to be apart. Back in the present, in the poignant solitude of the shower, Saren finds herself grappling with the weight of her emotions, her thoughts swirling in a tempest of uncertainty. It is clear that her heart is being pulled apart and torn under the weight of her emotions and thoughts. In a moment of raw vulnerability, she hugs her knees to her chest. Later, covered by a fluffy robe, she opens the door of her hotel room to find Mamet standing on the other side. As he offers her a remedy for her hangover, a flicker of hope dances in her eyes, momentarily dispelling the shadows of doubt. All seems to go well. They make small conversation, comfortable around one another. In the quiet intimacy of their shared space, they agree that the counselor was right. They had just needed some time to cool off once again. Last night, they had laughed, talked and enjoyed each other's company like they used to, like they were supposed to. Plus, they managed not to fight. Soft music plays as they bear their emotions. Saren admits that she saw the old Mamet in him, the one full of passion. As they navigate the labyrinth of their emotions, Saren and Mamet confront the haunting question posed by their counselor, would they fall in love again if given the chance? Mamet confesses that he would. Saren says that she would absolutely love the guy she had been with last night, the carefree and lively Mamet. But, in a display of lack of faith, she says that the stuff, the arguments, which brought them to this stage in life, did not vanish overnight. She is worried that the arguments would start again as soon as they land in Istanbul. She no longer wants to be the grumpy woman that she was in Istanbul, but they can't be what their heart desire, while being committed to each other. He crushes the bottle he is holding, in a display of distress. With a deep sigh, she admits that she knows about his desire to become a father, but she could not give him that, as she is not ready. And on the other hand, he does not want to live in Manhattan, but she plans to move here if she gets the job. The best way forward would be for them to get a divorce, and go their separate ways. Another argument erupts. For them to save their marriage, they would have to live together, and neither of them are willing to compromise. Career and relationship clash, and the distance once again becomes a chasm. He blames her for throwing all what they have away, for her career and Saren reminds him he cheated. But he denies it again. Their fight reaches a crescendo when Mamet says that it was her who got with him at first even though she was taken. Enraged, she demands that he leave. He tries to reason with her once again calmly. Soulful music plays in the background, which enunciates their heartbreak and the impending doom hovering in the air. Before leaving, he reminds her once again that divorce is not child's play, but she once again prioritizes her job interview over this conversation. 
Heartbroken, Mamet leaves her room. Saren breaks down into tears when left alone, her agony palpable. But he, trying to find solace, ends up at a club. He begins performing with a band playing, his hurt channeling out in the strum of the guitar. On the other side, Saren gets dressed and leaves for her interview. This is the same scene with which the story began. The kaleidoscope flickers from blue to red and back. People holler and dance, mesmerized by the temptations of youth. Later, as Saren is about to check out, Rose hands her a package and a letter from Mamet. He expresses his regret and apologizes for talking to that woman and making her feel unloved. For not supporting her like he should have. For not understanding her. He says he still loves her and does not want to lose her. People who lead an exemplary love life and stay together till the end of their days also go through tough times in their relationship. Yet faith and efforts are what keep them together. He wanted so badly for them to be together that he failed to see the bigger picture. But he is still madly in love with her. He then informs her that he will be taking the next flight to Istanbul and in case she still wanted to be with him, she could come. In his heartfelt words, Saren glimpses a glimmer of redemption, a flicker of possibility amidst the ruins of their shattered love. She ruminates and thinks about it throughout the day. Walking on the sidewalks, on the train, sitting beside the lake and getting ready for the photo shoot, her mind keeps wandering to his words. Her heart seems torn between the dilemma, stay and pursue her career, or chase the love of her life and give it one last shot. Her choice would make or break her, and she knew it. In the middle of a photo shoot, mask perched on her nose and a black dress hugging her curves, she finally makes her decision. In a moment of clarity, Saren realizes that her heart belongs with Mamet, her love for him eclipsing all other considerations. With determination in her eyes, she sets aside her doubts and fears, embracing the uncertain future that lies ahead. Ripping the mask off her face, she hastily picks up her baggage, apologizing profusely to the cameraman who stares at her, dumbfounded at the sudden departure, and leaves for her destination. Rushing through New York, she finally arrives at the airport, but the security refuses to let her board the plane. On the other hand, Mamet gets off the plane, unable to go without her. Amidst this all, they both finally spot each other. Saren is ecstatic as she sees him. Their eyes meet and he strolls over. A glass pane separates them, but it isn't enough to stop them. They finally let out all they have been holding in. Saren confesses that she does not want to live without him and he has every right to be angry. Tears of joy well up in his eyes and he asks her if she got the job. She answers in the affirmative but assures him she doesn't want it as long as she has him, admitting that she doesn't want a divorce. His happiness is palpable, as he tells the pilot that he won't leave without his wife and she will come with him. As they contact the higher authorities for approval, Saren and Mamet gaze into each other's eyes with relief and happiness. Their love reignites with a fervor that burns brighter than ever before. Upon the approval that Saren can fly with them, they run towards each other, body and soul united at last, sealing their fate with an embrace to shatter all except love. Nothing could possibly match up to the beauty of that moment. The homesick have finally found their home, they have finally found each other. They laugh and kiss and run towards the plane hand in hand. The workers laugh at the display of affection, rejoiced by something so profound. Back in Istanbul, fate plays a mischievous game, as her suitcase gets lost again. Saren doubles over laughing at the weird coincidence as Mamet sits worried in the luggage area. Hey, too, gives in eventually and joins her. In that moment, one thing becomes stark, no matter what gets in the way or what hindrances mar one's path, true love can get through it all and rise triumphant. Their love, though tested by time and circumstance, is stronger than any obstacle they may face. The movie ends with them hand in hand, embarking on a journey towards a future filled with promise and possibility, hearts united in a love that transcends all boundaries.